Hey guys, welcome back to Tigers Media. Ash Kendra here. Today we're going to be looking at the 50mm F1.4 Super Takama SI Pentax. This is considered possibly one of the best lenses ever made. Uh, up there with your Canon FDs, the Canon Dream lenses, basically a Bocco Master. Um, I've had it for a couple of weeks, I've had a chance to test it. We're going to talk about the lens and then we're going to also go check out some photos I've taken with it. Right, on. let's get through the intro first, but. here it is and what a beautiful beautiful lens um, yeah there's there's a fair bit to say about this I did a bit of research I'm going to give you a little bit of a history on it um, I'm going to talk about what happened to get it to where it is today and also we're going to look at some photos and this <laughs> I've taken some photos with this manual lens that I didn't think I would could take as an amateur photographer, so I'm super stoked. Um, big shout out to Mark Holtz, who's on YouTube. Check his channel out. He does heaps of stuff on vintage lenses. He actually got me onto this. Now the 50mm 1.4 was uh, made between 71 and 72. There's basically there's a couple of there's three different varieties. There's the the first model. There's a seven blade. There's a, also an eight blade, which is, that is the king of the lens. I actually have one of them uh, that I found at a, at a good price. They had pretty much double the price of this lens. Now the difference is in the bokeh. Uh, the background on the eight blade is just got that beautiful circle. You, if you find it and look at any sort of reviews on it, you'll know that basically that is the king for the Super Takamar series. And if you probably look at the only one, the other one that would sort of go up against would be the Canon, Canon Dream lens, the 0.95. And I guess that's probably vintage wise, we, the, the ace, ace and the king, but for, to get a Canon Dream lens, you're looking at a couple of thousand dollars, at least two and a half. Normally I've been checking out on eBay, two and a half thousand on eBay, roughly US dollars to get one. So they're mega bucks for a Canon. The Super Takama series is pretty darn close and the eight blade, I, I can't wait to check out and test. I'm pretty sure that's going to, from what I've said, that's pretty much equivalent to the Canon Dream Lens, but not anywhere near that price. So they're amazing, beautiful lens. I love it. It's a solid steel construction. Um, just built to last in 1971, 72. And if you have a good close look at that, you can see that it's, there's not a scratch or imperfection on it. When I bought it, I got it from a gentleman in Japan. He's obviously cared for and looked after it. The lenses are in fantastic condition. All of, there's no chips, there's no paint. I'm gonna try and make sure that it stays that way. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sort of undecided too, because depending on how the, the eight blade goes it's going to be whether I actually keep this lens or resell this one on and keep the eight blade so I've got to make that decision yeah but yeah so steel it's got the aperture it's a f16 down to uh, 1.4 and and the 1.4 you can definitely see it's a pretty amazing effect once you get the 1.4 it is a super fine line the 1.4, you really can't make mistakes with your focus, and that's what I've found. I've taken hundreds of photos, but to get to the right focus and, 
and master that getting that focus with that manual and especially when things are a little bit further away than you're trying to get that's the ones that really are a little bit tricky to get to so yeah focusing with these old manuals are a little bit of an art form but when you get it right holy bundy it is awesome um yeah i've got a you'll see some of the photos and i'm pretty wrapped and i think i've taken probably at least two or three with this lens the probably the three best photos i've ever taken in my life so i could not be happier right now for value for money for this manufactured 71 to 72 uh, a short period and after that they went into the smc and which was basically designated as a super super multi-coated and that was a coating seven layer process that they put on the lens to stop flaring and stuff like that. At 1957, Asai Pentax abandoned the M37 style screw thread for the wider mount of the M42. Um, the first one of that breed was the M42 was the Contax F Pentacon, which is a very famous camera. Uh, they're still on eBay. They do go for a bit of money if they're in good condition. And basically this allowed full interchange between the Pentacon system and the growing Pentax system. Uh, Takamo lenses of the Pentax series were faster and much more impressive compared to the Pentacon system. So better lens, they've decided to change it to make it bigger and wider. And you, I guess you see that a lot in mirrorless nowadays that uh, like on your Sony and your R series, the, the lens mounts are much bigger so they can get bigger glass on there to get that better image. So that's basically what they did with these ones. The ones before were a smaller thing and it just didn't allow enough to get enough light through, I guess, basically. And that, well, that's what we're all playing with, light. 1965 came a series of the 70 SV and the S1 were introduced, which had a mod modified mirror box. So they were the bodies that come out in order to fit the new 51.4 lens. So this lens couldn't come along until they actually modified the actual camera body. So, and, and this was part of it, changing that up to that mount, a bigger, wider one allowed this lens to be created and we're lucky it did. Uh, the Spotomatic from 64 and it's revolutionary TTL, which is through the lens metering system was basically the first one that you could really take advan full advantage of this lens. And they did it. Um, 1971, these come out and they had the multi-coated lay, multi-coated layer on the lenses, which helped obviously with the reflections. And in 1972, after a short run, they changed it to SMC. Now the Destination Super only refers to uh, an automatic lens. So, Whenever you see one of the Takamar series with Super in front of it, it's basically saying that it's an automatic lens. Being automatic, it basically open and close the shield on the camera, on the old manual cameras. Originally they didn't, you'd have to reset it. SMC was purely to designate the models that had the seven layers of anti-reflective coating. The holy grail of the 50mm, as I briefly touched on before, is the eight blade um these a good quality one mid hundreds i guess in australia over anything over 100 to 150 is a good price um your eight blades uh two to three hundred plus so as i said it's pretty much double the price of a, of a mint one of these the seven blade you, and you get to an eight blade and they're not that easy to get hold of there's a lot of attention out there to get those eight blades um, obviously myself and a lot of other people are interested in the vintage lenses and putting them on a, a digital camera um, so and they actually work really really well i was really surprised you know i mean yeah buddy, i thought i'd probably be yeah i'd get it to be not too bad but the image would be a bit ugly but it's it's a really 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 beautiful beautiful photo that it does take so 50 mil it's got a minimum distance of 0.45 centimeter
around here. You can see it's definitely a little bit clearer here. If you go in, go in one to one, his eyes not far off, it's pretty close. I just, I think I was awfully close on that one. I think that left eye might be spot the dog. Oh, it's, it's very close. And then, then if you go out here to the head, you can definitely see it's definitely in focus there. So not far off, I think, but um, it's come up pretty good anyway. Love that photo, my little buddy. Smashing a piece of corn, loves his tucker. Speaking of tucker, this one here, the Strawberries Frio Market, just run in and gun in with the, uh, with the lens on handheld. Uh, I love it, I love the color. I, I pretty, think I've pretty much got it all how I want it. It's all bringing it to that center of the packet, um, the focus point. It's neat, it's, it's picking up all those beautiful seed marks in the in the fruit. It's got that, that cling wrap, sh little shine off the cling wrap, I, I love that. Um, obviously nice and fresh, beautiful fruit in the market, so that was very cool. And uh, the only thing I probably thought I probably could have done is turned it, straighten it, or something like that. Maybe when I took the photo, got it in line, so it's sort of got a clean lines to it. But uh, I love this photo, and it's, as you see, it's beautiful colors come out of this lens. Uh, it, that was pretty easy to that. I didn't have to adjust that too much color-wise or anything like that. I'd just give it a little bit of luminance in it, but um, yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Even if we go in here, you can see around here, sort of around the focus point there, that you can see the seeds all come up and then look at those little colors just popping and this just blows right out down here so you can see all, all that baker down there so very cool um next one we've got is this crystal so there's a little crystal shop in the free markets there i thought it'd be good with the crystals and the shine look at the lights coming down on them and this worked out really well. Uh, again, 1.4, we got ISO 100, 100 for the second. Um, and you can see it just around that crystal, it just gives it like a big vignette and really draws your eyes straight into that uh, little green, I'm not sure what the crystal name is, um, but the focus point was around about here. Uh, if we go in there, you can see it's pretty sharp, pretty darn sharp in there. So if you can get that focus point right, it's pretty cool. And then come out here and you can see all this just beautiful little bokeh swirling swirling little pearls floating off in the background there so yeah pretty happy with that one next up dutch vanilla chocolate or dutch vanilla not chocolate it, it, that's what it smelled like it was, it was really good this little coffee shop uh they got all own beans flavored beans uh love this photo again uh all these photos i love <laughs> so it's pretty hard to say i don't but I really enjoy, it's got all, the, it's really crystal clear on the words and you can just see on the essence, essence there, it's just starting to blow out here. So that, that sort of section there is just blown and it's all gone by here. And then even around the edges of the coffee beans around here, it's all blown out. So you've just got this little, this one little section, basically like a little ball here where it's got everything, spot the dog and it's, Again, that's come up fantastic. I'm pretty happy with that one. That'd be great on a little brochure or a card or something to advertise that business. Now this one here is one of my favorites for the whole lot. It's probably my number two shot for this video. Um, it just pops, it just, yeah. Like, I can't say too much other than that, I'm wrapped you can see around the bottom here all that depth of field it gives it when it just blows that out even up here on, on these ones they're starting to blow out because they're in the background and these are all super sharp and those colors just pop um beautiful little place in freedom markets i love it um it's called sultan i think it's called sultan designs and, and that's yeah the little, little thing there is is a really smart guy um, didn't say anything just come up take a shot I'm sure he gets a lot of people who want to do it it's they all, all these lights he got there are just fantastic I'm sure he gets a lot of Instagram guys there um, he's got a little sign up just give us a mention Sultan gifts in the Frio markets and you can post your photo so 
I thought that was actually really cool of him and really nice. And I've got this amazing shot, which I just love. So very, very cool. And again, this lens just showing us true colors. <laughs> Uh, next, we there's a new place, new little uh, like a cheese. It's, it's a European small goods shop, and in the center of this is a little cheese heaven. It's a humidity, temperature controlled room, gla all glass, with these beautiful wood, brand new wood shelves, and they store all their meat, dried meats and cheese and stuff. Uh, obviously, these cheese, uh, some cheese in there, and got the wax, the red and the uh, orange wax coating on there. To, Look after the cheese. Um, couldn't help myself. I think this one came up really well. The swells of Bocker up here in the background. And then you've got this that's just blown out there in the yellow and this beautiful red block of cheese here. It's just nice and neat and the colours are fantastic. It's got that little sort of vintagey look, which is fantastic, I think, for the the feel of that shop. That's what they're looking for, that that down to earth that really you get sm oh the smells in that room are fantastic if I, could, if I could get the smells into this photo I would it smelt amazing and looked fan and looked really really cool some we did get a lot of good photos out of this tiny little room full of cheeses and meat so and uh, probably the best one out of that was this next one um, the smoked fricko beechwood smoked fricko <laughs> so you can see here the they've got like little timber shells and Obviously, they can hang up all these meats, and they can, it's a really well-made little shop. Um, and then this photo here, I love the colours. It's got that little vintagey feel, which is perfect for this beautiful lens. Um, and then that depth of field, it just just that's probably only that far between the, the that sausage at the front and the back, and that's just absolutely disintegrated and just makes those front two hanging just pop. And look at that label in the right spot. And that one's pretty much vertical, so these are both pretty vertical. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I don't think I could do too much more than that. I'm really, really happy. That was a good one. A beautiful little shop, this little small good shop. Um, again, the smells were just insane. So very cool. Be able to, I hope I sort of captured a bit of that into these photos. Now, this was my shot, shot of the video, or of the testing. Uh, Remembrance Reflection uh, Memorial up in Kings Park in Perth. Uh, Eternal Flame just constantly goes day and night, 24 hours a day. Um, it's there, it's a little pool. I had Jack running around going nuts. Uh, so I was quickly shooting around. I wanted to try and get some photos of this. I thought it might look good. Um, I had some ones the other way that were into the sun that didn't really work out. They're a little bit blown out. I swung around and I He'd taken off and I was going to chase him. I thought, nah, I just want to get this photo and I found it and I, I think I scooped the goods on this. I just love it. I love the way the flames, uh, it's 640th of a second, so I wanted to freeze that flame and get that action, which I've done. It's ISO 100. The water looks spot the dog flat here and it's nice and flat and there was no movement, no wind. That wind dropped right off when I took this and that allowed me to get that beautiful reflection of the flames in there. And then you've got that boker in between the flames up here. That's just blown. Yeah. Love it. I'm definitely going to be printing this one. It's one of those, well, I guess, you get a two or three out of a big bunch that's a keeper. And this is definitely one of them. Uh, absolutely love it. Next one is... Now, this is a memorial, obviously, for lost soldiers, um, for family and friends come. Family and friends come and bring these little poppies that they wear on Remembrance Day and come here and they obviously put a flower against their family member's name when they come to see them and spend time with their family and, and I guess reflect and have a chat to them and stuff like that. I do that with my mum when I go and see her and her, at her gravesite. It's, I think it's really important and I think it looked really nice to be able to I've tried to capture the fact that it's crystal clear down the back and then what the lens could do but also for that this photo sort of give you a bit of an image of told a bit of a story of how many people have died in some of these wars and how bad it it is and how lucky we are to live nowadays when these people have sacrificed their life to give us what we've got to be able 
to sit here and talk to you about a piece of glass and steel that can take a beautiful photo but if it wasn't for those people on the wall we probably wouldn't I wouldn't be here so um, it's yeah pretty pretty darn special place and if you don't get touched when you go to these places I think there's something wrong with you you don't have to agree with wars and fighting um, but I think you can we can all agree that uh, these people on this wall have done something special for humanity or and their country and their and their friends and family so you definitely have to respect that as such so i hope that captured that's what that's what i got out of it and i every time i look at this i sort of get that feeling and yeah, yeah that's what i was going for and i was pretty happy with that one okay now they call this the they call the canon dream lens uh, at three thousand dollars to get one uh you they call that the bokka king uh, there's others out there. You can pay $12,000 American for the new Nikon one to get this image. Uh, I paid 140 bucks Australian. 120, 140, something around there. Mid, mid hundreds to get this lens. Uh, guarantee you, you'd be paying at least in the thousands for a Zeiss or something to get anywhere near that. Uh, to be able to just do that and just that beautiful little pearls that whole background looks like an oil painting uh, Yeah, love it here. You can see here the leaves super crystal sharp The colors it's picked up the little stem here are the orange yellows into the greens the whites browns. It just Yeah, thought this was a really good image just to show you what this can do and how it can just just there's no way that you're not coming in and looking at the, at these pieces of grass and just it highlights them and stands them out, which is just a normal bit of Ponzi grass. In the background was this beautiful waterfall just over here. Um, I, I was actually trying to get the waterfall and then use the grass here as a little bit of a blur. And well, I got, the, got back and when I was going through the edit, um, or I looked at this one and I looked at the waterfall and the waterfall didn't look half as good as when I did this way because of what this and purely what this lens did to that background so um, I can't speak highly enough for this uh, and I've again got a shout out uh, a great guy uh, Mark Holtz if you haven't seen his YouTube channel does some awesome work with vintage lenses uh, got me onto this uh, champion bloke I wouldn't have bought this without his recommendation and I can tell you I'm super stoked thank you very much mate if you do get to see this I do appreciate it and yeah and this is sort of what he got across in his videos and he was definitely 100 percent right this is an unsung hero and if you get a chance to get one I definitely definitely recommend to get one it's an amazing lens and then coming over here 500 second I got to sort of freeze freeze frame it I got it at the right bit the, the wind had dropped off I was laying down I'd actually the, the photo I was trying to get was the little waterfalls just down here and then blow out the background which I have a really good photo for of they come up really nice but with the reflections here that water just glass and then the shadows at the front sort of acting as a frame uh, that leads you into that rocks and they're super sharp with that beautiful big patch of green and that reflection yeah love this photo thought it was, a, it was a winner and very happy with it hope you enjoy it as much as I do again just very versatile gives you a lot of options a 50 obviously it being a 50 on a M on the Canon M50 it's sort of I think it'll probably go at 1.6 probably about a 70 75 to 80 or something like that um, so does come in a little bit small um, but it, yeah you can you can move and it gives you a lot of options and I'm sure you've seen that in all these photos and that probably comes back to this next one um, out of work uh, you've seen this tree in a, probably a few of my other photos if you're in, on our Instagram um, the Tigers um, this tree with a change of seasons Generally the sun's around to the right over here, comes around this way and then I can look through that, that split in the tree and the sun's normally sits right here when I'm looking at that and, I, and I've got a couple of really good photos. 
change of season the sun's moved about 10 to 15 degrees in the sky now and where it goes so this tree is normally not in the vision but what it does do now is coming through this tree again i was able to get that with the sunset at the back and it's just blown that tree out and mixing that with the orange that beautiful orange of the sunset this nice and sharp it's that that you got that afternoon sort of early evening right on sunset it's yeah love it i thought it was a really lovely photo and turned out really well and then again just that lens is just fantastic i wonder how many times i said this lens is fantastic Pick a few. now this one this is a little plant this plant here is called the spin effects plant it is a evil piece of equipment uh they are like all these little spikes you can see them here they're super sharp there going one to one see if you can get right in to show you the end of these things uh, they you can see that there see the point on it they will go through denim jeans into your leg and hurt if you didn't have if you were barefoot running around there in a pair of shorts and thongs uh flip-flops for you american guys I don't want you to get confused and think I'm running around the bush in a G-banger. We don't do that here. Thongs are your flip-flops. Just, I'll just clarify that, thanks. No worries. These would uh, rip you to shreds and they're everywhere. You can't, you can't walk through the bush here without hitting them. So I wear like my work denim jeans and steel cap boots, so the thing. But you can see it's super sharp. Um, Again, it's got a nice focus point here. I was really happy with that. And then it just sort of blows blows out and then it gives you that light. I've got the light coming over just to fill it in. It was just gone dusk. So I had to get a little bit extra light in it, but it sort of worked out well. So I thought I'd throw that one in there for you. Now, we've got two more to go. Uh, this is just, now this is the one that I took out to F16. You can see it pretty much got everything in focus and I wanted just to get a just a generic sort of a landscape see what you can do in a landscape sort of type scenario obviously you buy this because of that bokeh and stuff but this also shows you that you can use it for it and get a really pretty pretty <laughs> pretty picture and have everything in focus if you're doing some landscape work um, just free free running vertical debt got up there picked up a couple of those uh, rays of light coming through from the sun there's a little bit there a little bit of aberration there i think from the lens that's about the only thing on it a little bit here but that's way back at the back and if you come in here if you have that just on a wall was a nice little a5 or something print uh you i don't think you'd even notice that so as much as it's it's in there and it and that's a long way off and that's probably why and because of that brightness um i think it's still come up pretty good if you come in here it's in the foreground it's that tree is pretty all in focus that was pretty cool and then you've got you can see here that's all ironstone so that's all pretty much you could nearly nearly weld straight directly onto that ground that's how hard that ground is so it gives you all that beautiful textures and shows you all that as well as gives you pretty much everything out there so that's that taking it out to f16 so you, you can still use it as a thing so a fantastic versatile lens that has the ability to just go bananas and then the lucky last uh coming back in the dark after that those shoots and doing a few shoots over there this one here it's iso 800 i had to really drop it down to try and get some light in 150 for a second so that's the only way I can sort of get it. Now this plant looks like a black and white, but that's actually just the, the darkness. There was stuff all light. Um, and I didn't want to get a light out of my bag. I packed up, I just had the camera, so I just, I just dropped it down to 800. And this plant is actually like a little flower, a little desert flower of some sort. And it's a white, actually a pure white plant. If you see it in the day, it looks like, I guess, snow. So that's why here you can see it, how it's all white in there. And you get these beautiful dark shadows because but basically that's how it is just in the dark and I just got enough light in there to get it and I think I'm pretty sure I'm pretty happy with how that focus turned out on that in there pretty darn neat and tidy and then again 
and it just blows straight out. Everything else just disappeared. I sort of darkened up with the shadow. It was a little bit brighter than that, but I sort of just darkened up the shadows because I thought that sort of really highlighted it. it. Although it is in the black and white, it sort of acts as a black and white by just a little, just closing out those shadows a bit and just letting that, that flower pop. So that was it. Pretty happy. Uh, what did you think about them? Hey guys, Rodeo. Well, we're going to do some testing today on the 50mm 1.4 Super Takama lens, the vintage lens. We've, got, we've done some stuff in Kings Park. Um, to shoot out here at this way. You can see that into that beautiful range. You get some stuff done with that sunset that's coming. I'm going to try and do a time lapse tonight, um, one I haven't done before, so I'm just trying to teach myself some new stuff. Thought I'd test it out with a 50mm, see if we can't get some good footage on the Canon M50. Anyway, um, yeah got a heap of shots we've got all them so we're gonna just this is the final chapter of our super Takama testing let's go do it we're off This is just all iron ore or ironstone. Very cool. five seconds it's going to do it uh, take a photo of that so we'll see how it goes hopefully I'll get it right how can you beat that sunset that is awesome I don't know if you can see it on the old GoPro if it comes through just as good as it is coming through here but it's very cool and then just just beautiful surroundings here out in the Pilbara Bit of uh, thick cloud coming through. We have a, up here, it's a wet and a dry season. Don't have the four seasons, only two. And it's coming to summer, which so it's mid 40 degrees Celsius here at the moment. And you get these clouds, big rain clouds, and pretty soon they'll come and we'll get oh, anywhere up to 10 inches in an hour some days on, when it really does rain. But yeah, it can get pretty, pretty awesome with the rain. I do miss it uh, by Darwin. So yeah, very cool. Anyway, let's get back to it. I'm gonna leave this go and we'll come back when we're finished with it. Yeah, so it's all going down now. It's gonna go in. I thought I'd just show you the back screen, see what we're doing. So you come in here, back of the Canon M50. You can see every few seconds it's coming up in that top left hand corner. You'll see it's 34 now. So that's all the different shots. So I think it started 180 or something and it just counts down. So for that uh, time lapse, it'll count down. So we've got 31 shots left, and then what it'll do, it'll stitch that all together and give you a time lapse video. Um, again, it's the first time I've done it. Uh, just wanted to try and include it in. We have got the beautiful, amazing Super Takama 50mm on there. So I guess fingers crossed I've set it all up because it was a gorgeous sunset and hopefully I haven't stuffed it for you and I can uh, I'll uh, as soon as this finishes you'll see it right after this I'll play this video with a little sweet epidemic music for you to enjoy okay we're done here Whew. time to go back <sighs> got some work to do on the computer I've got a daily vlog to sort out uh, tonight yeah I think it worked out, it actually looked pretty good. I looked at the first couple of seconds, probably 10 seconds of it, and it come up pretty good. Anyway, 
Let's go. Get it back before it gets dark. Yeah. There's big snakes around here. I don't want to get none bitten. No. I know. Let's roll. So there you go. I um, hope you enjoyed that. That's the Super Takama 50 1.4. Seven blade variety. What a beautiful lens. Um, I hope I haven't done it a disservice with my photography skills. Uh, you can attack me down below in the messages if I an average photographer that's okay um, I I'm happy with that I actually really really enjoying getting back into photography so when I come on uh, something like this this gorgeous lens uh, it's so much fun uh, this thing is beautiful and I love it and I can't wait to try the 8 blade um, I'll probably have to do a review on that so we can do a comparison review I think before I decide if I want to resell this one again what a lens super super happy stoked with some of the photos um, I think that the flame one from the Remembrance Wall Memorial up at Perth in Kings Park oh, I, when I, I didn't even know I had that photo I was started to do all the editing the other night on it thought uh, what have I got I started going through them and I had them all in different folders and I got to that one and I started playing and I went wow um, I was pretty wrapped with that one I put it on Instagram and I got a lot of nice feedback from some lovely people so I do appreciate that if you are on Instagram check it out um, and if you enjoyed the review or you didn't like it tell me what you didn't didn't like that helps me get better um, if you're not subscribed uh, if you wouldn't mind just tapping on that button, hit the bell. If you hit the bell, it'll let you know every time I bring one out. I do a daily vlog, uh, every day, tech news, photography news, fishing, baseball, pretty much all the stuff I'm interested in. Try and just, I just go through the web and try and find interesting things for everyone. So come and enjoy the channel, Tigers Media and the Super Takama 50mm 1.4. Boca King. Wow. Thanks for stopping by. Cheers.